Okay, so this is one of the classifications of calcaneal fractures. This is the row classification specifically. So obviously I have these rowers here on the screen on the slide to help you remember that it's the row classification. So the way I remember this is that ones are small, twos are posterior, three is um, body, and four is uh, intraarticular. Those are the more extensive fractures, okay? Um, and I use these pictures here to kind of to burn into my memory to help me memorize that. Some may might not be able to do that, but um, so 1A is the medial process of the calcaneus. 1B is the sustentaculum tali, and C is the anterior process, the calcaneus. So those are the smalls, number one. Number two, those are the posteriors. So if you can imagine 2A is not as bad as 2B. So 2A is just the fracture of the posterior superior calcaneal process, but 2B is an avulsion fracture of the posterior beak with involvement of the Achilles tendon. Okay, so that's why I've drawn that there. On Three is uh, essentially uh, perpendicular to two. It's just an extra articular fracture through the body of the calcaneus. And then four and five are extra intraarticular body fractures. So four is an intraarticular fracture through the body of the calcaneus without joint depression, and five is with joint depression. Um, and then Essex Lopresti is another cal uh, classification of calcaneal fractures that uh, that also uses four and five. So if you uh, uh, some say if you see a four or five type fracture, you should use Essex Lopresti and not row. So really, it's one, two, and three here for row, but that's neither here nor there.